want to come to stage is Boris Segret. Boris is the manager of CSERS, which is a space pole of the PSL University of Paris, and their focus is nanosatellites for science, astronomy, planetology, etc. Uh, their first CubeSat, called PIXAT, was launched in January 2018. And they're working on several projects in preparation, including interplanetary CubeSats, uh, swarms, and etc. So he's going to talk about DOCS, a growing software suite for space mission prototyping. Thank you. Thank you, Juan Reis. So good morning. I'm happy to... Isn't it too loud? Yeah? I'm happy to talk about uh, this series of tools. Uh, so... Uh, for space mission prototyping. So you all know about uh, CubeSat in Earth's vicinity, in low Earth orbit, and I think you are all ready to go far away. And then I think it's uh, the era of interplanetary CubeSat has begun, and uh, there are plenty of plans for that. Uh, for instance, since, since Marco CubeSat have been built and launched and operated by JPL and reached Mars. So behind, um, beyond this project, there are many more. And actually, at Paris Observatory, we also have some ideas, some plans in Earth's vicinity as a traditional CubeSat for astronomy. So we have, we want to make astronomy with stars here that are hosting exoplanets, and we want to see how it runs there. And we also have some plans to send a CubeSat in a Hohmann trajectory from Earth to Mars and to make uh, in order to make a space weather science. Here we have also plans to have single flybys above, so through asteroids. And if you have a fleet of uh, a, a spacecraft, and one of them will be deflected, not the other. And from this difference, you can, uh, you can derive the mass of the asteroid. If you are more lucky, if you can take advantage of a rendezvous mission, then the mothercraft is here, you are jettisoned from the mothercraft, and you make multiple flybys at asteroids that are connected with some trajectory correction maneuvers that we call TCM loop. So as you can see, we have, again, that's to determine the mass of asteroids. And if we are very good, we can also detect the distribution of mass of the asteroid and then say what it is made of. So all these plans require new tools to make early mission prototyping, uh, mission profiles. And that's why we developed uh, DOCS with a full series of uh, tools that uh, all output results uh, in uh, ASCII formats to be to get displayed by VTS, VTS, which is a free software, not an open source, but a free software provided by CNES, the French, French agency, and that is displayer. So that is a smart displayer, but it doesn't compute anything. So you have to compute things in order to get them displayed by VTS. That's why Docs is made for. And, and Docs is here because we don't want the project teams to to waste their times at redeveloping again and again uh, trajectory solutions, quaternion solutions, power sizing checks and double check and cross checks and so on. So we, we want to provide that for them in order for the team to concentrate on the scientific coverage and the engineering sizing, which, which is really at stake. And we want also to do that from the very beginning of the project and to keep the same kind of architecture up to the integration phase. And that's what we called uh, a new system engineering approach, which is uh, being popularized at the moment. So it's a model-based system engineering. So I'm a system engineer. And as you know, system engineers, they like spreadsheets, they like top-level requirements, they like a lot of papers and so on. OK. Uh, this new approach is in my opinion, much smarter. You develop from the very beginning very light piece of code that describe the scientific coverage you expect. So you don't code your instrument. You code the conditions for your instrument to get the interesting data. 
And if you do that from the very beginning, concept maturity level one, then it structures the whole project for the whole life of the project, and it helps you go to higher level of maturity. And typically, uh, I know there are people from space agencies here, typically don't expect any support from space agencies until you've reached by yourself CML5. So it means that you have to get the project matured by yourself. That's why you need some tools. So here is an example that I won't detail too much, but here is an example of the model-based system architecture approach. Uh, you have to code some pieces of code, as I said, and they all produce results for, to, VT, to VTS um, uh, displayer. Here you've got the display data. So here you've got the science coverage, so that's completely project dependent. So if you have some red flags, then you can discuss why it is red. Uh, so then it means that the science failed. And in your mission profile, all over the time of the mission, here you can see some engineering sizing, and then you thought the power was well-sized, and suddenly, due to a very small change in the geometric condition, it drops, and then you are completely uh, in safe mode. You are in safe mode, so the, the mission is over. So then you can focus on why uh, this situation happens. That's MBSE. So uh, the first group of modules we want to develop in DOCS uh, concerns the trajectories uh, with a full propagator, a propagator that is adapted to deep space. And what is interesting in this propagator, it is that it is also compatible for proximity operations. So CubeSats are more and more wanted to come with mothercraft and uh, proximity operations become reality. You can have your own gravitational models in, integrated in this propagator, not only spherical harmonics, but any kind of complex gravitational models. Uh, you can also uh, so you can uh, integrate scientific models uh, as many as you have. We have uh, uh, we have an adaptive time step, uh, and I will come to that later. That we want to improve, and we carefully validated that. Also, there are still some issues, and uh, if you want to challenge our results, or if you want to uh, check our results, you are more than welcome to do that, and uh, we will provide you with the uh, maximum of support for that. So if you want to make some simple trajectories about Earth, then just use CNES software that is called Stella, which has a very good, uh, a very good um, a model of Earth in it. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have the idea of the time uh, yet, okay? So, uh, second group of modules that are in DOCS uh, are dedicated to engineering, to engineering, so essentially the power and the data link. Uh, both modules use an intermediate module that deal with intervisibilities, and this module produces a file that is called an event file, that is a very good structure for the rest of the project. It produces the event called, uh, for instance, Eclipse in Ingress or Eclipse Egress. So it computes the ingress and egress for intervisibility events like eclipses and ground station intervisibilities. And it produces this file in an ASCII file that helps structure the whole project. Then, this kind of event file is used by EPS and uh, so electric power system uh, to uh, simulate the remaining energy on board. That's how we discovered in the previous examples that uh, we thought it was good uh, sized, but it was not. So it takes into account uh, the solar array distributions and uh, the orientation of the spacecraft. Then we are developing a data link module. Uh, we have primitive model yet, but uh, so you can expect what we want to do with that. You can imagine. Uh, so we want to know how much data are still on board. A third group of modules, we want to deal with orientations of the spacecraft if line of sights are at stake. So at first we want to produce uh, so we can produce uh, easy strategies, easy orientation strategies, for example, 
uh, spin from this time to this spin, make a spin about this axis, or track this target, either a target on the ground or a target, a flying target, mothercraft for instance. So depending on the needs you have, or uh, a scientific target, like a planet or a star. So inertial pointing, tag, uh, tracking, tracking pointing, or spinning. So that are the three simple strategies we have yet. And we'll go to more complex modules later. And we also have started this year a generic EDC simulator. And we want to do that because uh, it's, it's really a pity to see some teams developing each time an ADCS simulator. So it's complicated. It's really a waste of time to start from, the, uh, from scratch again and again. So it's possible to have open source, generic sensors and actuators and to see how, how the, the, the sensors and actuators are coupled in order to disturb uh, your pointing strategy or so on. So we j just started with that. So. Sorry for this uh, over, overloaded slide, but I wanted to go in details, in some details of the engine that is behind these modules. So we are coding in Python with the Anaconda 3 environment. Uh, we code everything in open source, uh, yes, in open source, so uh, um, uh, MIT license, if I'm right. Uh, some parts are not open source, but that are free, that's a VTS uh, software. We want, to be, we want the uh, docs to be compatible with all operating systems. So at the moment, Ubuntu and Microsoft Windows, and we expect to go to Macintosh and Debian, and we have some tools uh, to distribute that uh, easy, easily in the future. We, 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 we will work uh, intensively on the trajectories in order to have a, a, smarter, uh, a smarter engine for the propagations. And uh, we have not developed yet, so it has to be done uh, a user interface for, for some modules, for instance, energy. And we want to, to go in, in deep interactions with MBAC, so model-based system engineering approach. We also think of developing some remote service, like uh, you drop a configuration file and it makes your heavy computation on our server and then we deliver the results a few seconds later. So we see that. What you can do for docs, you can do a lot for docs depending on your skills and, and here are our priority A, B or C. So please uh, have a look where you want to uh, act and if you do that then uh, uh, contact me now, these days, or contact me later. Uh, if you just want to keep in touch, just subscribe to this newsletter. And we want to develop some new uh, user interface like this, so with holograms and so on, so you can play with that. Okay, so at the moment, it's more like this. So the interface is more like, uh, I'm sorry. Oops, it doesn't control. Yeah, the, the interface at the moment is like here, so. Maybe. So I, I'm stopping here. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, you mentioned on one of your slides a Keplerian engine called the Conic. Uh, can you elaborate on that? What is it with respect to SGP4 and SDP4, which most of us use it as, I think? Yeah, Conic is just the name we gave to a module that makes Keplerian trajectories. Actually, that's the, the basic module. You have a, a one, body, a one body problem. So if you want to produce, at the beginning of a project, you don't need a very smart engine. So you just want a, a quick trajectory. You don't want to bother with that. You want an ellipse. You want to go from there to there and blast that. So that's why we developed a Conic engine with a Polyastro uh, uh, library in it. Uh, so that's the, at the beginning we called it the easy trajectory module, so just give me a trajectory, just do that. And then if you want to go in more details, you need a smarter engine, and that's uh, the propagator, or in Earth's vicinity, Stella. So th these are the three options you can use.
Yeah, here. Okay, the, the Keplerian engine is just conic. So in Earth's vicinity, just use Stella. It's a really good uh, engine. Actually, people from Paris Observatory have developed the engine in it. So it's quite reliable. Up to which altitude? I, I think it goes to, to GTO, to GEO. So uh, it, it, you can, you, uh, in my memories, so uh, you can make, uh, you, you, can, you cannot go to the moon if it is your question. Is it your point? Yeah? No? So, but easily f to, to GEO you can do that. And it includes uh, space weather perturbations, it includes uh, uh, drags, and so on, in low altitudes, and so on. Boris, you mentioned that uh, the output of DOCS, if I understand correct, and then the input to VST is ASCII files, which sounds a bit arcane. Can you elaborate on those files, on this format, the ASCII files? Here. So, uh, uh, every output of DOCS are in ASCII format. So, if you want to do what you want with that, just read ASCII format. Uh, it it, uh, it uh, complies with CCSDS CIC format, uh, which is documented in, uh, in the CCSDS uh, documentation. And uh, we decided to do that because it's directly compatible, can be displayed very easily with VTS. Is that the point you yeah, wanted to add? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So. Um, it, uh, the second question is uh, because um, this reminds me all a bit about uh, so mission analysis. There's another tool, uh, very famous, uh, GMAT from NASA. So, how does this compare? Thank you. Uh, so, actually, GMAT is a very nice tool and it has been developed for years. I think it's 15 years, something like that. And it's open, it's free at least, I, open source as well. Uh, so, what most of people mean with mission analysis is a trajectory. But mission analysis, in my opinion, is much more than this. So GMAT makes very nice trajectories. Indeed, you can have one five, six, seven, and even eight and nine. Okay, great. You have good time adaptative, uh, so adaptative time step, but actually it doesn't work. So adaptative time step doesn't work for a single flyby. If you do that, and we did the same mistake, so if you do that, so you ask your propagator, which is a Runjikuta 7-8, something like that, uh, with adaptive time step. So you make a computation of the gravitational field when you are here, and next step you are here. So you just miss the point, so because of the high velocities. So you need a very, uh, much more reactive uh, strategies to adapt the time steps, and that's what we are working on. And uh, GMAT is compatible with spherical harmonics. You cannot, exp so if you have the file of, of the coefficients of the spherical harmonics, you are happy, but uh, if your scientist, your, uh, your most preferred scientist next door tells you, okay, spherical harmonics doesn't work for me because Shuryamov Kerasimenko is not at all convex, so you cannot use that, so you have, to, you have to have a distribution mass model, so then you cannot use GMAT. So there are some differences, and what DOCS is intended for is to have also the other modules, uh, sizing, uh, so power sizing, data link, intervisibilities, um, and quaternions, quaternions, so orientation. So, we want also people to develop some interface in other interfaces to read uh, STK and GMAT formats. So that's also a topic of interest for us. I, I put the last slides again. Yeah, one, we have time for a quick, one, quick, one more quick question. Yeah. Maybe I missed this earlier, but uh, did you say this as, have you tried this with a full mission? And does this like, have, have you tried this with another CubeSat that has already gone through orbit, these orbits and such? Ha, have we tried with? An actual, actual uh, mission. Yes, uh, that flew? No. Or, 
Oh yeah, yeah. that's what I mean. So it doesn't okay. have light heritage. It, it, yeah. it's, it's being developed and uh, the, the examples I showed are currently being developed. So they are at a phase at CML1 or 2 at the moment. So uh, let's meet in a couple of years.